What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today we are back with more mini tests coming up. And I know some of you guys just took that SAT last week, and that's pretty exciting. Definitely let me know how it went in the comments. Somebody asked me as well in the comments. Sorry, just checking my sound. Somebody asked me in the comments as well, hey, can you do the November SAT on your channel? So I can't do it because it is not officially released. I can only do, and all of us on YouTube and elsewhere, we can only do the officially released tests, of course. I mean, I don't even have, I don't, you know, we, we, you just can't get those uh, tests. So they are not available for me to do, unfortunately. I wish I could. I love doing, doing the test. But the next one that will be released, I believe, is going to be the March one. That's my guess. So hopefully when March comes around, I know it's a ways away. When March comes around, I will be able to do that one. What's up, Brianna? Aaron, well, just wait and see. You're going to find out uh, probably next week. So you never know, but I wish you the best of luck. What's up, Giselle and Hashem and Succulent Presence? What's up? All right. Without further ado, let's do this thing. Here we go. This is a calculator section. So I'm going to pull up my calculator here and we're going to start in three, two, one. Let's go. <clears throat> Data collection conclusions. Let me make sure I'm at the right zoom here. Oops, that was good. <clears throat> temperature of boiling water above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Do, 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 do. So, uh, wait, ten, well, what? Above, oh, so I got it. Above, so this is like 10 degrees. This is like 210, 220, 230. T tablespoons of sodium chloride added to one quart. Conducted a control to determine the effect of adding sodium chloride to water at sea level on the boiling point based on the results of this experiment. Okay, got it. So it looks like as you're adding more sodium chloride, AKA salt, it looks like the boiling point is going up. Now it's at, you know, when you add three, whatever it was, tablespoons, now it's at 100, 220, so on and so forth. Which of the following conclusion is not valid. The more sodium chloride that is added to boiling water, the higher the boiling water's temperature. I mean, I think that's tr legit. The more sodium chloride that is added, the longer it takes the water to boil. I mean, it looks like a higher temperature, so theoretically, but I wouldn't, I'm not sure about that one. That's a little iffy because it that has nothing to do with time. It just says the temperature goes up, so that's a little iffy. There's an association. Ooh, 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 this is interesting. There's an association between adding sodium chloride to water and an increase in, okay, this is definitely legit because that's nice, like, chill language. It's an association, yes. There's a linear relationship between sodium chloride added to water and the water's boiling temperature. There appears to be a linear relationship. And I mean, this is a little bit definitive, but at least it's still talking about the temperature. This is the one that's talking about how long it's taking, and that may totally... I mean, and it is true because it's just a matter of how quickly it gets to the boiling temperature needed. Time is irrelevant. Boom, done. <clears throat> a spacecraft heading to Pluto, heading for Pluto will take pictures of several other planets on its way. The above equation gives the distance D in millions of kilometers of the craft from its first Pluto opportunity with Mars in terms of the time T and days. What is the meaning of 212 in this equation? Okay, so hold on. Distance D in the craft is from the first photo opportunity. Wait a minute. The above equation gives the distance D. So, so at time, okay, I got it. I got it. So at time 212, because that's what's inside, and if I plugged in 212, it would zero out. And D would be the distance from its first photo opportunity with Mars. So at time or day, 212 days, it's going to be right there to take the photo opportunity. At time 211, it would be 1.06 miles, 1.06 millions of kilometers away, I guess. Um, etc. So, nope. Yes, what we just said. B, the spacecraft begins its journey. I mean, no, no, no. Sorry, it's not that. What am I talking about? After 200 toes, no, it's B for sure. Boom, done. Yeah, yeah. All right. Javier has a phone, cell phone plan that allows him to use up to four gigabytes of data per month. Streaming videos is the only action he does on his phone, which uses up this data. 
Each time he streams a video, the amount of gigabytes of his phone's data plan decrease. Each time he streams a video, the amount of gigabytes of his phone data plan decreases. Right. Okay. Specifically, a cell phone company estimates that approximately 0.12 are required for every 30 minutes of video streaming. 0.12 for every 30 minutes of video streaming. If Javier spends M minutes this month streaming videos, which of the which of the best approximates the amount of data he has remaining? So we know we're starting with the y-intercept of four. So all of these are right. We know it's not plus because we're losing. I'm guessing it's it's C because I already know it should be 0.12 over 30, um, which is obviously not 0.12 over 30, because now that's 0 0.004 per minute. So every minute he's losing 0 0.004, whatever. It's basically what we have. C is the winner done. Number four, a donut company makes cream filled donuts using one fourth cup of dough, one half tablespoon of cream per donut. Okay. The company decides to change the recipe to use three times the amount of cream. So that's three fourths cup. Um, if the donut company's new recipe uses the same amount of dough, what is the ratio of dough to cream needed to make 12? Well, this is irrelevant. But what's the ratio of dough to cream? That's it. Dough and cream. Uh, they obviously don't have it as a fraction. They have it as all whole numbers. So I can multiply both of these by four to get whole numbers. So four times one half is two. Four times three fourths is three. So it should be a two to three ratio. C is the winner. That is it. Next, number five. Random sample of 34... 35 Ford passenger vehicles has a mean gas mileage in gallons, 5.9. Okay, great. The estimate had a margin of error of 2.6. So when I, as soon as I see 2.6, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, that, that's the margin of error. That means it can go 2.6 below, 2.6 above. I could use the calculator, but I'll do it mentally just for fun. So it's 23.3, I believe, because if I subtract 2.6, right? And then if I add 2.6, it's 27, 28.5, correct? So, because we go to 27 plus 0.6, 20, okay. So then it says, other following, which is the most plausible value for the true mean gas mileage of all, blah, 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 okay. It can't be this, it's out, no, it can't be that, sorry. What am I doing? It can be this, it cannot be this, because it's outside the 28.5, and this and this are out. So most plausible, it's the only one that's, in that zone um but the other ones i guess could be right all right good job <laughs> to myself what am i saying uh which of the following cities had the largest population density in 2010 population density is defined to be the number of people per square mile which of the following cities has the largest population density um so it's people per square mile so it's this divided by this uh i guess we're gonna have to do it uh we could probably estimate now nah, i'm just gonna do the division Six, four, five. Triple check the numbers. Make sure there's no mistakes. Divided by divided by forty-eight point three. I mean point four three. And that is one three three one three three two one. Next is ah, let's take forever. Two six nine five five nine eight. I could don't have to do. I could be like two point seven million, right? But whatever. Divided by two two seven point one three. People per square mile. Just making sure I did that right. Um, this is eleven eight six eight. Not that it. You know, we already know it's less, so it's out. Then this one is two four seven zero divided by three five. I feel like this is gonna be oh too low. Ten one six one. That's out. And then this one one five one seven. Yeah, I mean, you actually you don't need to <laughs> be that careful. But oh, see, I missed a the digit there. One five one seven. Zero divided by one three five. It's fine. That's good enough. One one two four one. So this is obviously the winner is Boston done. Boom. Next. The equation above relates the approximate seven minutes left. The equation above relates the approximate price P of a three D tone and the number of days that have passed since I've reached. Which of the following statements best describe the relationship is shown between the approximate price and the number of days? And it looks like 
the price is decreasing exponentially uh, because it's an exponential equation and this is less than one. So linear, no, no, it's exponential because the price decreases by the same person. No, it's not. That's obviously you don't decrease by the same. Wait, actually, no, it could be that. What am I doing? It's exponential because the price increases. Yeah, it, it is C, sorry. Uh, it, it And what it's decreasing by is 11%, not 89%, but what's taken away from one is the decrease. Not, not that it's asking that, but you know. Next is this one. Lucia posted a video of her cat playing on the piano. She found that the following expression amount, the total number of people had viewed her video two days after she posted it. Cool. After how many days did the total number of people viewing the video double from the original number? So the original is the initial value is 18. So we're trying to figure out when this equals double that, which is 36. So check it out. We're going to isolate now. So divide both sides by 18 and we get 2 equals 16 to the 0 0.0125t. All right, cool. We got to exponent. I, look, you can solve this with logarithms, but there's no, you don't need to. So I'm going to show you what we can do now. We can say that 2 equals 16 is 2 to the fourth power, right? And then we have that to the 0 0.0125t, whatever. Now we can multiply in and we get 2 equals 2 to the, or 4 times. It's 0.05t, 0.05t. And this is 2 to the first. Now we can kind of nix those guys and just set these two equal to each other. 1 equals 0.05t divided by 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05. I believe that's 20. Just double check. 1 divided by, so I think the answer is 20. And that's it. 20 days, it will double. If you ha really want, but I'm kind of running low on time, you can like plug it in and make sure it's 36, but I'm going to trust it and move on. Five minutes. Consider, oh God, these are going to take forever. Consider the system of equations above where C is a constant. For which value of C are there no solutions? Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find a shortcut. This is terrible. And this pro these types of like confusing problems are never on the real SAT, but that's okay. We'll do it anyways. 0. 0.6 equals. So I'm going to distribute inside 1.5 um, times A plus BC plus 0.8C. And then, then I'm going to read 1 six equals 1.5a plus 1.5bc plus, that's probably 0.12 because, um, no, sorry, 1.2. 0 0.8 times that because 8 times 15 is 120. So I'm just going to not even use the calculator because I'm running low on time. And then this one, we'll do the same distribution. This becomes negative 0.2 equals negative 2.5 times B minus 4.8.48. Uh, I'm just multiplying my head. You can do the same thing. That's negative times that is positive, and it would be 6, but it's 0.6. And then I'm going to have to distribute the negative 2.5, right? So then I got negative 0.2 equals, I'm running low on time, negative 2.5. I may not finish. Shoot, B plus 0.96. Six times that is 150, so, I mean 15, so 1.5 minus 1.5a. Okay, how can I do this quickly? Constant for no solutions, A, A, B solutions. We need A, oh my God. Uh, so it's one of these three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can do this fast. For which values of C, are there no solutions? Um, so if I zero that out, it'd be 0 0.6 equals 1.5 a, and then this would be, now I don't think it's zero. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's, um, oh, 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 the a's match up. So here, watch negate, 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 negate. And then we have to get the B's to match up. So what? What times 1.5 equals 2.5, 2.5 divided by 1.5 is, it's five thirds. It's this one. Okay, I think I got it. I'm, I didn't really get a chance to check it, but I'm just going to roll with it. It's either that or probably none of the above. A function P is defined as this, where A is constant, given that P of 7 equals 15. <sighs> what is that? Oh, got it. So all that means if I plug 7 in, I should get 15. Okay, here we go. 7 minus A times 
7 minus 15 is negative 8. I can finish this. 7 minus 20 is negative 13, and then it's plus 15. Okay, and this whole thing equals 15. Great. 8 times 9, I like you to calculate. I don't have time. 80, so, so 104. 104 times 7 minus 8. No, I'm almost out of time. <gasps> No, that's 728 minus 104a, 7 plus 15, the 15s cancel out, 0, so then I'll subtract 728, and then 728 divided by 104, 728 divided by 104, it's 7, oh my god, it's got to be 7, that's weird though. A can't be 7, because then if I plug, oh yeah, of course it's 7, because the plus 15, okay, because then that zeroes out, and then you get the 15. Dang, that gave me anxiety. All right, let me see if this is correct. I'm just go with it. Darn it, I got four wrong? What did it, how did I get that wrong? That's weird. Okay, let me see. So the company decided to change the recipe to use three times as much cream. Oh, I messed it up. I wonder if you guys caught that. I multiplied this by three. That's the dough. Whoops. So three times as much cream, that's three halves. So then it's one-fourth to three halves and then you'd multiply those by four and you get one that's 12 over two which is six so that, that was just a reading mistake sorry about that and i'll see if anybody caught it as i was doing it did anybody catch it uh oh chris i thought i mentioned south by southwest rejected my proposal how how dare they no but it's all good um we we got so much support on youtube actually we took a we took a like a bunch, we took all the comments from that. We're going to turn it into a huge poster because the, the feedback was super helpful. It was awesome. But, uh, yeah, so I didn't get it, but I, I mentioned this on another live stream. I'm going to keep applying and applying and applying. And we've got a new proposal for next year. That's going to be so much sweeter anyway. So we're just going to keep rolling with it. Uh, happy birthday, savage world. And by the way, yeah, we do all make mistakes sometimes, right, Joe? Um, by the way, if if uh, any of you want to check out our SAT video course, the link is in the, in the description below is our super awesome math legend video course. So you should definitely check it out. We got three full practice tests up there with customized explanations for every single question, okay? So it's really, 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 really good for learning purposes. What's up, Andreas? Greetings from Mexico. All right, peoples, I got to bounce. Thank you so much for joining. If you did enjoy the video, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next 